Welcome to this Good Friday Act of Witness, led by the Lisburn City Centre Minister's Fellowship members. We're delighted that you have joined us as we read through the account of the crucifixion of Jesus, telling the story of God's love for every one of you. Those taking part today are John Brackenridge, Brian Agnew, David Turtle, Michael Davidson, Paul Dundas, Dermot McCaulkin, and myself, Sam Wright. We are reading John chapter 19, and I'm beginning at the first verse. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. That said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home.
later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And, as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid to rest. Because it was at the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And on this Good Friday, I share with you our Good Friday blessing. May God of all goodness bless you. On this Good Friday, with its symbol of the cross of love, we Christians fully participate in the mystery of death and life. In facing our fear of death, we can realistically embrace the daily gift of life. May you all embrace the belief that love is the strongest power and that nothing can ever separate the beloved from lover, friend from friend. May you see this day as Good Friday because as in the life of Jesus, so with yours, God wraps you with courage in your troubles and strength in your distressing times. When all seems impossible, may you lean on the cross and rest at the foot of that cross. This day, may you all be blessed with the goodness of God's extravagant love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.